Hi, this is Lawrence Gallian, and you're in the new place inside. I wanted to give you a quick update about what's happening in my life. Really some amazing things have been happening, and I know the unconscious is really now beginning to take a role. Something very, very interesting has happened. Sort of by accident, I had been looking for a good psychoanalyst. And I had been looking for a Jungian psychoanalyst. Well, just uh, a couple of days ago, I had my first session with a Lacanian psychoanalyst. Now, I'll repeat that, Lacanian, the, and that's Jacques Lacan, if you don't know. For some reason, he's not known in English-speaking countries, yet he was one of, like, the big three, Freud, Lacan, and Jung, uh, that transformed psychoanalysis. So it's very strange. He's known in European countries. He's known in uh, South American countries where he's extremely famous uh, throughout the world. But for some strange reason, he is not well known in English speaking countries, the United States, England, whatsoever. So, well, what's the deal with this Jacques Lacan and what happened? Well, I didn't know really shit about him. Uh, I had heard the name, really nothing more than that. I discovered he was born around, I think, April, April 13th, 1901, and he died in September of 1981. So that's 1901 to 1981. And the fascinating thing about Lacan, Jacques Lacan, he was a, he was a Frenchman from Paris, uh, was that he really, and I mean really, believed in Freud. And he thought that it was the job of all psychoanalysts at that time and, and in the future to develop the teachings of Freud, to better understand them, to continue in the tradition of Freud. Uh, there are many Lacanian psychoanalysts and specialists that don't even consider that Jung was part of this whole movement. They thought that Jung had really gone off on his own path, uh, and it is true that he was thrown out of the, I think it was called the Psychoanalytic Association, by Freud. So. Um, Anyway, Jacques Lacan, he's not very known for various reasons. One is that he's very, very difficult to understand his writings, and uh, he, gave, he gave many talks. He really didn't like writing books. He was basically forced to write some books, but he gave a lot of talks, and he's extremely difficult to follow. Unlike Freud, which is kind of interesting because it w Freud was his hero, but Freud is like, uh, well, Freud was a true author besides being uh, uh, well, the, the discoverer of psychoanalysis, psychoanalysis. But Lacan, on the other hand, is very dense, and he goes through all sorts of different labyrinths. And there's, very, there's various theories about like why he was so difficult to understand. Some people say that it was out of uh, humility, that he didn't want to write in stone or put into stone his ideas because he saw the work of Freud as something that is evolving and will evolve throughout the future. Uh, other, people, other people say he just had problems communicating. 
uh, and there's a million different opinions, but the passion, the love, the devotion of these uh, followers of Lacan in the non-English speaking countries is just amazing. So what, what are we faced with here? You know, we've been really delving into Jung archetypes and everything, but I have been showing due respect to Freud because, I mean, he was the man. He started it all. But suddenly I find myself, after my first session with this Lacanian therapist, thinking, wow, uh, at the end of the... Well, he asked me, do I have any questions? And I asked him about his training and uh, degrees and so forth. But now I have lots of questions on my mind, like, uh, is he going to try to put me into a mold of, like, uh, only Freud? Like, like, as you know, Freud was an atheist, and, and Jung believed in, like, a interior type of divinity that we have, or he would call it this, the self with a capital S. Uh, so we have a real interesting conundrum that I'm facing. I, I really wanted a Jungian psychoanalyst, and I end up with basically the closest thing that you can come to a Freudian psychoanalyst in this day and age. Now, Lacan was really into words. And I find that fascinating because all of those, uh, those of you who know about Robert Anton Wilson know that he was really interested in exploring words. And uh, he even wrote that book where he left out, I forget what word was it to be? Uh, he left out one word out of the whole book. Um, and Lacan was very interested in language, not like, French, German, English, in that sense, but your choice of words and uh, repetitions of words or phrases. Uh, but I'm only like scratching the surface. I, I've known nothing about Lacan, basically, and uh, now I really have to like get myself up to speed and I, I want to find out, well, like what's this therapist uh, point of view uh, via Jung. Is he going to try to uh, like break me of my uh, my devotion to the teachings of, of Jung? Um, and uh, and really like we know I have invited my unconscious to express itself in my world. So therefore we're left with with a big question, is this the direction my unconscious really wants to go? In spite of all of my spiritual thoughts and uh, my past with various religions, maybe my unconscious wants me to be with an atheist therapist or analyst. So I don't know yet. We just had our first meeting. I respect the guy. He's definitely intelligent. He's a professor of uh, psychology, and um, and he's a very devoted Lacanian. So I just wanted to bring you up to date on on what's happening. This is like this is like a big wave just crashing over me. Because, like, you know, we were, like, really into this Jung and our archetypes and so on and so forth. And then suddenly I'm faced with this man that is saying, like, uh, oh, I'm a, a, a follower of Lacan, who is an atheist, uh, who was... Uh, and there's even debate. He, he, he talked Lacan... Lacan changed the definitions of words also, which is strange if he was so interested in being precise about words. Uh, we, we find that he actually changed the definitions of various words. 
So you have to learn what they call the Lacanian vocabulary uh, to, to learn all his terms, like Freud had the id, the superego, and ego, but Lacan has different meanings for that. Uh, and uh, he, he was very much into the naming of a person that was very important. And, and you know, those of you who have been following me for many years, know that I was born, I was, I was adopted. So originally I was born out of wedlock, but my mother named me Joseph Anthony, which is very, very rare for those days to give a child up for adoption a name. But they legally put that down on my birth certificate. When my adopted father adopted me, he put his first name in front of the other two. So legally, I am Lawrence Joseph Anthony. And uh, then as I grew through my 20s and 30s, I really wanted to change that last name, Galliano. And I even was thinking of changing the whole ball of wax. So I went through various names. One, uh, one of them was Val Sage. Another was from the Latin, Gar Genitur, which means to cause, to become. To cause, to become, to like, sort of like God saying, let there be light, something like that. So, um, uh, yeah, I've like been, I have a history of trying to rename myself. And finally, a poetess invented Gallian. And originally she wanted to name me Tristan Gallian because I love Wagner's opera Tristan Unisolda. But I thought, oh, that's a little too far from my original name. I'm not so comfortable. So I settled with Lawrence Gallian. I don't know if this has any meaning. I'm sure to a Lacanian psychoanalyst, it has a gigantic meaning. But let's find out. I just want to give you this quick update. And uh, let's explore Lacan a little bit. I think it's really worth, worth our while because if Robert Anton Wilson thought he was worth exploring, I think he's worth exploring. So uh, let's go. Let's continue our work. I'm here with you. I haven't changed. This is a website about the self-actualization of men, about creating a better life for yourself, and a better life for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm included in this equation. So thank you very much. Please subscribe if you've done it already. I thank you very, very much. Hit that bell icon so you'll be notified because for some reason, subscriptions just don't cut it anymore. You need to also hit the bell icon. And I would be very, very grateful if you would do that. Okay, everybody, take good care of yourself, please. Love yourself, respect yourself, honor yourself, and be a real man.